In this video, I will go through the main elements of implementing a difference and difference approach um, in R in particular. This video will not go through the theory of difference and difference. It assumes that you have done that already and that you have material. In the notes to this material, you will find a link to a PDF file which goes through the R procedure in more detail than I will do it here. Uh, and we'll also link it a bit better to the theory than I, than I do here. Here I'm really trying to focus on the intuition and then on some elements of the R implementation, not all the um, fine details. However, that's what this document is for. This video is based on an example which comes from Angrist and Pishka's Mastery Metrics uh, book, excellent little book. Chapter five goes through an example about changes in the minimum legal drinking age. There were changes in the minimum legal drinking age at different points in times in different states in the US and that is what, we, what we're gonna use as an information to identify the impact such changes have on, in particular here, the number of deaths of young people between 18 and 20. So to best illustrate uh, this, let me show you this. So I've prepared here a little sketch and we'll, we'll fill this up a little bit. So we're thinking about how to use difference and difference approach. The policy we have in mind here which is being changed and which impact we want to evaluate is the minimum legal drinking age policy and we will have an abbreviation for that MLDA. So for starters let's think about two of the states in the US Arkansas and Connecticut. So the minimum legal drinking age in Arkansas is 21 years and it is 21 years throughout our sample period. Turns out our sample period starts from 1970 and it actually goes all the way to 1983 okay but let's focus on the on the earlier 70s here so in our sample period the minimum legal tr uh, drinking age is 21 years in Arkansas and that used to be sort of the standard then there was some federal legislation which allowed it the states to decide whether they wanted to reduce the MLDA potentially up down to 18 years. And Connecticut in, uh, indeed made use of this new possibility and in um, 1973 or for 1973 uh, legislated that the uh, minimum legal drinking age would go from 21 years to 18 years. Okay, so in 1973 for the first time 18, 19 and 20 years old, old were allowed to legally drink. And let's actually, let's write this down. This is really the, the category we are, or the age cohorts we are interested in. 18, 19, 20 year olds. These are the three year cohorts we are interested in. So throughout the entire period in Arkansas, nobody of that cohort was allowed to legally drink and in uh, Connecticut up to 72 there's slight details which I'm uh, sort of brushing underneath the carpet here uh, but up to 1972 equally no adults in this age cohort were allowed to drink but then from 73 onwards 18 to 20 years old year olds were allowed to drink. So in a classic two by two different diff setup, the only data we're using are these data here. Two states, oh, sorry, um, that's of course the, um, the wrong time window here. So the time window we would be looking at is the before and after period. So 72 would be the period before the change and 
73 is the period just after the change. So in a classic two by two different diff setup, this is what we'd be looking at. When we have one state here, Arkansas, which doesn't change the policy, and the other state, Connecticut, which does change the policy. And then we'll be interested in some sort of outcome variable. In the particular example here, we are interested in the number of young people in that age cohort which die. That's a little macabre, but it's an important issue. Okay, And the question here is whether by making it legal for 18, 19, 20 years old to drink, whether that has an impact onto the death rate uh, of this age cohort. In particular, we will later look at particular reasons of death, motor vehicle accidents, um, suicide, uh, perhaps also um, any sort of natural deaths. So, and let's say we're interested in, the, in these deaths, then these are sort of four periods we are looking at in a classic two by two diff uh, different diff setup and what, what we basically do is we'll see how's the outcome variable changed in Arkansas from 72 to 73 and then how is it changed in Connecticut from 72 to 73 and then we calculate the difference of these two changes so that's the second difference that's why it's called different diff. So this setup is um, super powerful but quite limiting so firstly if you have more data, so if you can extend your analysis to, you know, the these other year uh, years before and after. So if you can look at this entire period here, then you should do so. And the reason, one reason why you should do so, is that it allows you to test the underlying assumption which you have to make. Uh, to in order to interpret any difference in difference you get as a causal interpret to, to give that a causal interpretation we need to assume parallel trends that in the absence of the policy the trends in the two states would have been the same and if you have more data then you can actually look at look at these data and establish whether that's a, um, a reasonable assumption or not now the next dimension into which we may want to um, extend this analysis is that we're not only having two states. In fact, there are more than 50 states in the US and all of them will have either behaved like Arkansas or in some sense behaved like, um, like Connecticut. So either they haven't changed the policy or they have allowed young people between 18 and 20 to start legally drinking. So why should we only look at these two states? So let me add to this picture uh, a, a third state, and in particular, I'll add Oklahoma. So Oklahoma also dropped the um, legal drinking age from 21 to 18, but it only did that much later. It did that for the year 1977. And in the years before, as for Arkansas, no 18 to 20 year old was allowed to drink, but then from 77 onwards, they were allowed to legally drink. So you can see here we added a state, but we added also a complication because the timing of the policy in Oklahoma is not the same as in Connecticut. So our traditional setup, different diff setup, and we will see an implementation of that traditional setup in a moment in R, doesn't really work anymore. And let's muddy the waters uh, a little bit more still. If you look at these three states, we basically treated this policy as if it is either a zero or one. Okay, so then think of this, you know, being a, like a switch, okay, which is, you know, either zero or one. But there is more subtlety to policy. Sometimes you can sort of measure the sort of intensity with which a policy was implemented. And let me show you what I mean here. Let's think of Wyoming. So the abbreviation of Wyoming is y, uh, WY. And what Wyoming did is they changed the minimum legal, legal drinking age from 21 
not to 18 but to 19. So they started out as all the other states with a zero, uh, a zero proportion of people between 18 and 20 being allowed to, uh, to drink. But then for 1974, 19 and 20 years old were allowed to drink. So of this cohort here in Wyoming, let me get a different color. Where's the color which I want? change the color here so in Wyoming it was then this these two cohorts out of the three cohorts which were allowed to drink so in some sense if you think about the intensity of the policy it had a measure of two-thirds because two-thirds of that cohort were allowed to drink and they were allowed to drink from legally drink from then onwards and in between yeah, actually that policy wasn't introduced to the 1st of January in 1974, but actually sometime in late summer, 73, actually I think for the last five months. So the measure here was actually 0.44, which was approximately five months out of 12 times two thirds. Okay, so for the last five months of that year, two thirds of these three cohorts were allowed to legally drink. So what you see here is here we treated the policy not as a switch between zero and one, but more like, you know, there was sort of a, a dial here between zero and one and anywhere in here the policy could land. So in Wyoming, the policy landed somewhere, somewhere here. Okay, two thirds. Mm -hmm. So what you see here, this sort of like table of, of values here, this is super crucial to understand how to implement a different diff approach if you have more than two states with variable timing and actually variable intensity of the policy as illustrated here with the example of Wyoming. In the application, which we will look at for, uh, in a moment, this these values will represent a variable which is going to be called legal, okay? And it is interpreted as something like the proportion of 18 to 20 year olds which are equally or legally allowed to drink. It's one if everyone between 18 and 20 is allowed to drink in a particular year, it's zero if no one is allowed to drink and any proportion in between. So with this in the back of our mind, let us now go to the code and see how we implement such an approach. I already mentioned that this example is based on the example presented in Angris and Pishka's excellent Mastering Metrics book, chapter five. And in fact, the data which I'm using here are the data provided by Angris and Pishka through that website, which you, uh, which you can see, uh, which you can see here. So that's super good. Um, people providing data for, for the analysis they present and so we can replicate it. That's brilliant. We also provide its data code. Now here we want to talk about the R implementation and I'm very grateful to Jeffrey Arnold, uh, who wrote an R implementation of uh, the work presented in chapter five, and I'm basically adapting his uh, his work. I'm, I'm I think I'm presenting it for slightly um, less advanced users of R. So we'll start. Of course, we have to uh, load some libraries, and we have to set our working directory, and then we have to load data. Okay, this is an R data set, and you'll be able to get these data from a link. Uh, in the notes underneath this video. So what we get is a uh, data set, a data frame called DEFs. Okay, so uh, we can quickly look at this. There are all sorts of variables here, population, uh, average age in particular age groups. Uh, what 
I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just show you a little slice of the data. So we're gonna filter a particular state. The states have numbers here. We'll talk about this in a moment. A particular year, a particular age group. And then I'll just sort this data according to certain criteria. And what you can see here for a particular state, your state number five, we'll figure out in a moment which state that is. Um, we have observations for that age group for different what's called here D type and that's deaf types okay either any deaf type so in that year 173 people in the age of 18 to 20 died in that state and that breaks up this 173 into 73 from motor vehicle accidents 16 suicides 17 homicides um, 40 other external any sort of other accidents 27 internal my understanding is that sort of natural deaths so that's what the data looks like you see we, are, we also have population data here for instance now let's first think about these states um, the, the numbers are, are sort of a, a little bit difficult to interpret it would be nice to have state numbers so let us see how many states we have here and what, what sort of numbers they have now you see here these numbers go from 1 all the way to 56 now of course there aren't 56 states there are fewer states and you can see that there are some numbers missing like 3 7 uh, what was that? 14 for instance is missing as well now for the experienced um, econometrics masters as Angus and Pishka uh, uh, amongst you you will then immediately realize, especially if you have experience with the US, that these numbers here actually represent not any arbitrary numbers representing states, but very particular number, the so-called FIPS code. Every state is associated with a number to make sort of, you know, so data keeping actually a little bit easier. And I have a file here prepared for you, and you can also download that from, uh, from a link below. If you look at that, spreadsheet you see these are states numbers the FIPS codes and we also have the names and two letters abbreviations which are also very common and quite useful especially when we come to plotting in a moment so you see for instance state number five is Arkansas and uh, so basically what we're going to do is we just want to add the state names and the abbreviations to our uh, DEFS data frame which so far only has these numbers so this is basically what this code does and let me not talk about it in detail in the PDF file which you can find linked you find more details about uh, about this uh, then you can of course you can look at the data some initial summary statistics but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk about these in detail let me just show you a couple of graphical presentations again in the PDF file you find a few more uh, I will be filtering out two states um, Minnesota and Arkansas and so we'll put that into this temporary data frame def cell so we only have 162 observations and we will plot this and here it comes okay so for the two states Arkansas and Minnesota we have the overall and uh, no, sorry the def, uh, def rates for MVA okay that's motor vehicle accidents and the variable we are looking at is the m rate that's the uh the rate per 100,000. okay so and you can see um we have for the two states their time their timelines here and uh amongst others you can see perhaps the most obvious in minnesota there really seems to be a downward trend for all of the three age groups a pretty a very sort of steep downward trend here for the green group which is the 18 to 20 uh, age group so uh, let me slice the data slightly differently now we are um, we are looking at one age group only the 18 to 20 years old and we are filtering for different DEF types, all DEF types, but the all. Okay, so we want the subcategories, and then we'll plot. Uh, we plot this. Where is it? Here it is. So again, for the same two state states, and you can see that amongst that age group, 
it's actually the motor vehicle accidents which are the predominant cause of death for 18 to 20 years old um, okay and that was that picture now a few other pictures which you can uh, look at in the uh, in the uh, in the PDF file the last picture I want to look at here is uh, this one and this now filters out the data from uh, Connecticut and Arkansas the two states uh, we we talked about before okay the two states here in the red box so that's the data set we now gonna look at so let us save this data in an object called AP data one we are having all the data up to and including 1983 that's exactly as in chapter 5 of Angerist and Pishka because in the end we want to replicate the um, the results in that chapter so we stick to their data selection we're looking at the age group 80 to 20 18 to 20 and we're looking for starters of motor vehicle accidents only so let's just plot this firstly by the way here I choose Connecticut and Arkansas so it fits to my little sketch before in the PDF file I think it's Arkansas and Alabama but the rest is the same so let us plot this graph so we've now basically filtered out the the death rate for motor vehicle accidents for the two states for the age group 18 to 20 and you can see that in Arkansas where the policy didn't change so it's actually this downward trend we mentioned earlier in Connecticut it looks like it's with some fluctuation it seems to be staying fairly uh, fairly stable so can we from just looking at this plot can we judge whether the policy made a difference remember it was 1973 so we are about here when the policy was implemented in Connecticut so the reduction of the minimum legal drinking age just looking at these pictures it's just often not you know not very clear so what we're going to use is a regression approach and for the classic two state example the two times the, the two state example we don't only have two periods now because we have for every for both the two states we have 14 observations 14 years of data we're using a regression approach and to do that in the two state example we need basically two variables and then a third one a combination of those we need the treatment variable and we define that here and that variable will basically take the value one or true whenever we are talking whenever we have an observation associated with Connecticut as a state then we have the timing variable the post variable which is one in all periods from the period the first period of implementation onwards so that was 1973 and then we have the treat and post variable the interaction between the previous two variables so this will be treat times post so you you can immediately see this treat times post will only take a value of one if both treat and post are one so that means only for Connecticut from 1973 onwards in fact in this example what we are dealing with is for this red case this red variable here or the, the two lines here this is really the treat times post variable okay it will only be one for Connecticut from 73 onwards so once we have defined all these variables and put them into our AP data framework we're just running a linear regression if our outcome variable the death rate M rate mortality rate as the outcome variable and then treat post and the interaction treat post as explanatory variables again I'm not going through the details of diff and diff analysis here if this sounds totally strange to you then you have to look at some material that you know introduces diff and diff uh, as for, from the start and then you will find specifications like this so we're uh, running this and oh, we ha I haven't run that code so let me 
run that code first. Now I can run the regression and we can look at the results using the stargazer function. And here you can see, which is, I think it's just a little bigger, so we can see the entire result. So you can see that the tree post variable here is positive and statistically significant. So the three asterisks tell us that the p-value of the test of the null hypothesis that that coefficient is really zero, and this is only sample variation, the p-value for that test is smaller than 1%. That means if the null hypothesis was true, if that coefficient was irrelevant, then the probability of getting such a value as we did get in the sample is less than 1%. Or we judge that to be too unlikely to maintain sort of trust or belief into the null hypothesis we rejected. And why are we interested in this post? Because if our assumption of parallel trends in the two states holds, then this estimate gives us a causal estimate of the effect of the change in the minimum legal drinking age from 21 to 18, the effect such a change has on the mortality rate for motor vehicle accidents. That means we should expect if we have such a measure, reduce the minimum legal drink, drinking age from 21 to 18, we should expect an increase in the mortality rate for motor vehicle accidents of around 35, meaning 35 extra deaths per 100,000 due to motor vehicle accidents. Okay, so in terms of numbers, a positive impact, of course, in reality, a negative impact, that's something you don't really want. Okay. So this is how we would use diff and diff if you have only two states. But now, of course, we know we have more states or in our little uh, sketch. Of course, we had four. We also had Oklahoma and Wyoming. Of course, we have all the states in the US in our data set. And for all of those, we will have these, this sort of information. And that, in what follows, will be called the legal variable. Okay, it really takes the role of this treat times post in the two state case, and we just call it legal. And it's called legal here because it's sort of the proportion of 18 to 20 year olds which are legally allowed to drink in a particular year. So, how do we use that information? Let me go. So, we're going to the multi state, multi period, diff and diff. Um, there are some details here again the PDF file will tell you why we do this. We are basically now selecting again all the data um, up to 83, only 18 to 20 years old, and we start with death type all, but we'll repeat the analysis for all this, the subcategories. So let me run this code, get our, so we have this sort of subset in AP data. So you can see we have 714 observations uh, here you can just see it next to my image and um, now we run a regression and what do we do we're having our outcome variable the mortality rate and that's a function of that variable legal which we just described state fixed effects and year fixed effects okay so the state now takes the role of the treatment variable before the year fixed effect sort of take the role of the um, of the post and the treat post is now being sort of covered by that new legal variable. So let's run this and let's look at the result. I only, there are now lots of coefficients because we have this state and year fixed effects. I'm only looking at, and this is what this does, I'm only looking at the coefficient to legal. That's the only thing I'm interested for now. But we have to recognize there are more coefficients and it's 10.804 and if you look at chapter 5 in mastering metrics you'll see that's exactly the same table it will appear in table 5.2 what will not exactly match is the standard error this one is significantly smaller than the one reported in table 5.2 we'll get to that in a moment first in uh, in the book they report also the a specification where state specific trends are being allowed for that's what this variable here does an interaction between state and year um, details are on the pdf file so let's run this and let's look at both of these results both of the models we estimated so far so the 
coefficient for the first model is still 10.84, that's nothing changed, and the coefficient for the model with the state trends is 8.5. All right, so before we continue, so we know we can replicate coefficient the coefficients in table 5.2. But so far we haven't replicated the standard errors. And the reason for that is that when you when you run a diff in diff, especially if you have a lot of states, you have to acknowledge that you're most likely dealing with a case of heteroscedasticity, in particular with a case where the residual variance varies with the state. So the way to deal with that is with cluster robust standard errors. And Without much detail, I will just explain how to how to calculate here. We use this VCOF CL function, which comes from the sandwich package. And we feed in our model and we say we want cluster standard errors with the state variable as the cluster variable. And we can feed that into that co-of test just for the first illustration. And what you what you can perhaps see is you get, so we did that for model one here. You get the same coefficient for legal, so you get the same coefficients, but you get a different standard error. And if you compare this standard error to the one in table 5.2, you will see it's exactly the same. Okay, so that means we can now replicate the standard errors. It would be nice to see these standard errors in this sort of nice stargazer output as here. So that's basically what I do next here is we'll I basically calculate the same standard error here, but I put them in a vector of standard errors, a vector as long as the coefficient vector. And I do that for model one and for model two. And then we can feed this new standard errors. We can feed these into the stargazer function and tell the stargazer function, hey, can you please replace um, the other standard errors with, uh, with these? And that's basically what we do here. So we'll, we'll look at the stagger, we look at the output of model one, but replacing the original standard errors with these cluster robust standard errors. So now we have the, um, the nice output as before, but with the cluster uh, standard, uh, clustered standard errors. And you can do the same with um, multi-model output here. Uh, you then have to, um, you know, produce this list with both of these sets of new standard errors. Let's really uh, look at the PDF file to see a bit more explanation. But here we have our table with the new standard errors. So that's all uh, very fine. And now I'll be jumping over quite a lot of code because what the next bit of code does is it basically replicates the entire, the same, this exact analysis, which we just did for, um, all defs, okay, where was our, uh, we selected the data, uh, the data here, AP data, and it was for def type all. We are now replicating this entire analysis for motor vehicle accidents only. So let's do that. So this code's exactly the same, just that the def type is MVA. Okay, so let's just run that and look at the result. And you can see that motor vehicle accidents you get almost everything of this effect. Okay, it was for all deaths, it was 10, and 7.6 7 of that seems to be due to motor vehicle accidents. And again, these will be exactly the same coefficients as in uh, chapter five of Mastering Metrics, and exactly the same cluster robust standard errors. So this can be done for all the different categories, suicides, so we select suicides, uh, internal, so my interpretation is natural deaths here. And then we come to replicating the results in table 5.3 of mastering metrics. And it's almost the same, it's just that they add an additional control. They say, well, could it be that any changes in the mortality rates are actually due to sort of, you know, not necessarily, or may, may be coming through the fact not that, um, Okay, let me restart the sentence. That wasn't a correct sentence. So we're having, we're trying to modeling the, the effect of that policy change the, in the minimum legal uh, drinking age onto the mortality rate. Now, you may wonder whether there are other things which affect this relationship. And 
it may well be that the amount of beer taxes, which will have significant impact on the actual price of alcohol or beer taxes, a proxy for the price of alcohol here and how that changes, whether that also matters. Um, and it may well be that the amount of beer tax may well be related or correlated to the legal variable and therefore it may matter. It may be that there are some states which are very conservative and they have uh, high beer taxes and high uh, minimum legal drinking age. And then you have a correlated variable here and you should really be including it as a control variable. So that's what we do in this section. It's basically exactly the same analysis, just that we add beer tax as an explanatory variable. The rest is the same. So let's just do that. Actually, let's only do that here for the minimum uh, for the motor vehicle accidents, let's just run this code. And here's our, uh, here now our results. We are now showing the coefficients to both legal and beer tax. And you can see that coefficient to legal basically has not changed. Right? Let's just go to the previous result. It was 7.6 without the beer tax. And it was basically still 7.6 with the beer tax. And the beer tax variables that don't seem to be statistically significant. So the, our interpretation about the impact of that policy on the minimum legal drinking age is still uh, has survived the inclusion of this beer tax variable. And then the code does that for all the different um, def types again. So this was really the end of this little replication. So remember, in the notes below this video, you see a PDF file which goes through more detail and a bit more explanation and you will there also find links to the data files, the two data files you need. Hopefully, this has helped you to understand the principles behind implementing diff in diff if you have more than two states uh, and the different states implement policies at different times and perhaps even different intensity. That's a very common setup and therefore it's important that you understand how you implement this and we'll, we'll also show you how to implement such an approach in R. Thank you very much for watching.